to the creation of MBCI, families wish to have a school with government accreditation and a Christian character. There were 27 families very concerned about the education of their children. They envisioned a place that taught a model, a Christian worldview that supported their faith and heritage. Created a statute. Students shall be educated in mind and spirit and in the precepts of our fathers. German, the history of our people, as well as religious teachings be taught and valued give you a complete picture of what they expected the school to be. Each member was asked to raise $100 as a personal donation or a collection. The fund created MBCI in 1945. There were 44 students that arrived in September, split between the two grades, 10 and 11. I was a student in 1945 when the school began. The school started off as two classrooms rented from MBBC, which later became Concord College. More additions happened in the following year. The subjects were the Manitoba government curriculum, which we adhere to. The school added, I should say, German. They added Bible. And they also added music. In 1947, a 40 by 40 foot structure was built, adding four more classrooms and two labs on the lower level. Subjects included reading, spelling, grammar, and literature in German. There was also religious studies such as Bible studies, beliefs learning, and Mennonite history in German. In addition, girls had to wear uniforms back then. There was a lot of pressure put onto the society and the board. The school needed some physical activity for the kids. In the 1950s, MBCI considered building a completely new campus in North Kildonan. But they finally realized this would be so costly that they went ahead and decided to build a gym and they actually started building it immediately as soon as they had some money available. H.W. Redekop drove the plan of the gymnasium on time and on budget with the MB Church approval. The Red Gym was constructed in 1959 with a cafeteria and two labs. The gym cost $117,000. At the time, it was considered one of the best and biggest gyms in the city, and students used the facilities for basketball, volleyball, and floor hockey. Many memorable people have went through the athletics program. Mr. Platt remembers many players and coaches. I've had the pleasure of coaching here at MBCI for a long time and we've had a lot of success. We've won many provincial championships. But what's really special about MBCI is in the Red Gym or the Blue Gym now, the, the, the hours and hours of practice that we have put in, girls and guys, teams have put in, in those gyms. And some of the tournament finals have been unbelievable. When I was in grade 10, the varsity boys were a phenomenal team. And we had a chance to win what was then the Kildonan Conference Varsity Boys Basketball Championship. Hadn't done that in years. And so we had the gym packed out with people with garbage can lids they were banging on and chanting, go Hawks, go. And we won that championship with a couple of free throws right at the end of the game. And that was a phenomenal memory. Well, there was a lot of great athletes that came through NBCI, but I would say the most famous one has to be Cindy Clausen, of course, winning six Olympic medals in speed skating lucky enough to coach her in grade nine basketball. Found out what a great athlete she was at that time. She wasn't necessarily the greatest basketball player, but I tell you, was she quick. In the gym, we used to do concerts in what is now called the Red Gym, but was just called the gym back then, because it was the only gym we had. And we had to, first of all, put this big, giant orange tarp over the entire floor in the gym. 
and then we would carry up all the chairs and stands for the bands and all the percussion we had to bring this all up the stairs and then all gym classes had to stop for an entire day because we would have our dress rehearsals in the gym. So it was hard, but we had a chance to perform and like most schools, we performed in a gym. Also, the stage was way too high. It sounded good, but you couldn't see everyone. As a result, the school wanted a space for the student body to be together, especially since they were thinking of expanding the school to 600 students. The school had already built a state-of-the-art gym at that time for its sports program, but the school had a tremendous music program, so then it was decided that we should provide something for the arts people. And that's how Jubilee Place, this place, came to be about. In 1987 to 1988, Jubilee Place was opened with the help of the architect Paul Jansen. The auditorium was named in a naming contest won by Mrs. Betty Zanstra. There have since been many changes, such as new flooring, chairs. So we built additional classrooms along with Jubilee Place, which provided for shops, woodworking, home ec, later on computer studies. So that was also to broaden the program. One thing to make it happen, the most important thing probably is you had to raise the money. But our community has always supported us. The community that supports NBCI has at that time and continues to do so to this day. I spent a lot of time doing a lot of music things at MBCI, so junior vocal jazz, junior jazz band, and some of my favorite memories in middle school was getting to do the Brandon Jazz Festival trips and meeting you know, some of the older grades and getting to perform. Also doing the musicals in middle school and getting to be with some of the high schoolers and other middle schoolers and meeting everyone. With all your friends and your peers, you get to know other people that you wouldn't necessarily get to hang out with from school, from different grades, and it was also really challenging. The musical that we did when I was in grade 12 was Fiddler on the Roof, and that was a lot of fun. And I can still sing the songs when I watch Fiddler on the Roof on TV, and so that was another great memory. I was able to be a part of choreographing Beauty and the Beast. We realized some of the costumes were so big that kids couldn't actually fit backstage. Stuck and, and tripped over each other and weren't appearing when they were supposed to appear. This was not going to work. We fixed it, but it was funny at the time. As a teacher, of course, I've conducted probably a thousand concerts in the Jubilee Place, maybe more than that. There was one performance, and this is when, when Mr. Taves was conducting a Christmas concert and we had the combined bands on stage and then the combined concert choirs on stage. Performance of Hark the Herald Angels Sing. And I remember that as one of the highlights. There's been lots of school spirit and traditions that have come through our school. For example, there was Spirit Week and Skip Day. Guys, I can proudly say that it was my class, the class of 1988, that invented skip day, grade 12 skip day. For a few days, there was chatter kind of in the group, like, hey, why don't we just take a day, a day off and go to Grand Beach? Beautiful day, 30 degrees, absolutely sunny. Um, we played football on the beach, we went swimming, we had a great time. I think trouble that we didn't mind getting in. I think all of us liked it. We sort of knew it was our last bit of spontaneous fun as a grade. After Jubilee Place, NBCI had not made any, many improvements in quite some time. The school wanted to expand the student body and have distinction between the younger and older grades because they're in the same area. More students than we had room for. We had a plan to add grade six, which we needed space for. We had expanding programs like drama, where we needed a new drama area. And so the idea was we simply needed to make a bigger school. And so in 2005 we started, it took us about a year, and then we were ready to go. The new library used to have a lot less furniture, but there are now a lot more lounge spaces and tables for work. So I really liked the library, especially in middle school. I was a huge reader, so I really enjoyed, you know, me and my friends would go and we'd read or we'd study there and we'd keep kind of doing that, you know, even in high school and everything, it was a good place to hang out or get work done. In the 
2021 to 2022 school year, NBC had welcomed the first grade five class. The goal was to expand the school and to create an exciting play-based experience. First, they renovated the middle school offices and prep area into the new classroom and furnished it with flexible furniture and learning stations. There's a few things that make grade five uh, here special. Um, one of the things is that we have a very small class size, which means that all the kids can get to know each other really well and it allows me to have lots of one-on-one -on -one time with each of the kids and I get to know them really well, they get to know me really well and we have form really great relationships. The grade five program experienced lots of field trips in the first year of grade five. They go to Fort White to learn about the land and fortification. So we do a lot of stuff that's hands-on outside the classroom, which I think has just been really great. It's special because there's really fun teachers that make you have a fun time here. The Wall of Canada thing, I got to do PEI, the small little itsy bitsy little island. The school really values each of the students getting to know each other, but also knowing themselves. The kids have plenty of places to build up identity, which is just amazing, and it's so fun to be part of that process. More than half of my life I've spent here at NBCI, and that every one of my students are gifted, and to be able to develop relationships with them, and to be able to encourage them, to become the kind of people that, that God created them to be. You're quite welcome. And it was a pleasure meeting with the grade six students of MBTI. And thank you for your teacher, Andrew Brown, for inviting me.